Okay, once again, we are here to continue with our lesson on human resource management. Good afternoon. As I've been telling you all the time, we have done several aspects of it. You know, human resource management is quite broad. Today, we are going to talk about another thing. You know what we did the last time we met? We look at performance appraiser. When you are engaged, your performance should be evaluated. Your performance should be assessed so that your weakness, your strength and your weakness could be identified. When necessary, the necessary corrective measures should be taken. Now you have been engaged. You have been employed. You are giving out your service. So what is the organization also giving you in return to the service that you are giving to the organization? And as you think, that is the main reason you apply for the job. You are not a philanthropist. You want something to take care for yourself and your family. That is why you apply for the job. So today, we are going to look at an important topic. It's an important topic because it's very important to the employee. And that is compensation. So today we'll be looking at compensation. Compensation. What does it mean when you say you have compensated somebody? Very simple. So by the time we are through with today's lesson, so I said overview. This is what we are going to cover. What is the mean? When you say compensation, what is it? So the meaning of compensation. Then you have been hearing of wages. You have also been hearing of salaries. What is the difference between the two? We will look at that one. Then we will also look at some basic pay schemes. The method of paying wages and Salaries, we we'll also look at that one. So, under that, we we'll look at the two main basic pay schemes. So, we we'll look at the time rate and peace rate. For costing students, you don't have time, you don't have problem with uh, time rate and peace rate because that is even if you have not done it now, you will do that one. It's the relative math students who may not know that. Then when you have look at these two, the two main pay, basic pay schemes, we we'll look at other methods of payment. So under that, we we'll look at bonus. When you say bonus, what is it? Then we also look at commission. So within the next 30 to 35 minutes, we should be able to finish with this topic on compensation. So what is compensation? It's very simple. You know, you have done motivation and you look at two main types of motivation where you say that it can either be extrinsic or intrinsic. I have also told you, you are giving out your effort and the organization needs to reward you for the services or for the work that you do. So when you say compensation, it is so that you understand this way, extrinsic. So because we did intrinsic motivation and extrinsic motivation or external motivation. So the concept of extrinsic, you understand. So it is, it is not intrinsic. It is extrinsic. Intrinsic reward that employees receive for their work. So as I teach, at the end of every month, the government rewards me extrinsically. I go to the bank and I withdraw my salary. That is compensation. That's my compensation. So, it can be my monthly salary or any other benefit. 
So it, 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 it is not only the salary, there can be other benefits that the government can uh, also uh, give uh, to me. For example, every November, government pays every teacher a certain amount to or for the teacher's professional development. That is not part of the teacher's salary, but it is part of the total compensation for the uh, teacher. It's part of the total compensation. So you can also say that it's the total reward. It is the total reward. So that is why I have underlined total reward. That suggests that it is not only the salary or wage. So any other benefit that the worker receives in addition to the or in addition to his salary or her salary or wage, everything will come together and that will be the person's compensation. So the total reward received by employees in exchange for services rendered for the organization. So as to whether you stay in that organization or not depends on whether the compensation, your compensation, both the direct one and indirect one. We will look at it because we can divide compensation into two. We have direct compensation and indirect compensation. So if you look at this diagram here, I said compensation. Now let's get closer so that everybody can see it. Compensation. So it is divided into direct compensation and then indirect compensation. If you look at the explanation I gave here, the direct one comprises your salary, if you are a salaried worker, or your wage, if you receive wages, or your wage. Or there are some who receive commission. So wages, salaries, and commission, they all form part of the direct company. But the two main are the wages and then the salaries. But there are some two who work and their direct compensation is their commission. And we will learn about what commission is all about. Then, apart from this one, you also have indirect compensation. That, that is the, that comprises of the benefits. The benefits. So, you can look at French benefits. Somewhere along the line, you learn about what French benefit is, so you know what they are. But I don't know whether you can get closer to that. So when you look at some of those things, you, you can talk about free or subsidized lunch. So you are in an organization, then uh, every afternoon that the organization gives you Land for free, you don't pay for anything, or it is subsidized. When you say when I say it is subsidized, what does that mean? Probably, if you had gone somewhere, a restaurant to buy food, you would have paid, let's say, uh, 50 CDs for that food, but the organization can give to you for 10 Ghana CDs, it means it has been subsidized. So you can have free or subsidized lunch, or it can also be life assurance. And I don't need to explain to you what is life assurance, because we have done insurance. So when you say life assurance, you know what life assurance is. So the organization can uh, give you life assurance, and they will pay the, uh, for the premium and then in, the event, in the happening of that event, which is bound to happen you will be compensated. Uh, so then there can also be he any health care that is given to the worker. Compensate, uh, pension plan is also part of the indirect compensation. Pension plan. At the end of every month, a certain amount is deducted from 
the worker's salary. But the employer also pays a certain percentage, which is even more than what is deducted. So if the worker is paying, let's say, 5% of his or her salary, then the worker or the uh, employer will pay about 12.5% in addition. So that portion that the employer is paying is also a fringe benefit or indirect compensation. So that is why pension plan, so that at the end of your working period, when you are 60 and you retire, you can enjoy that uh, money. Then we can also talk about leave, leave, whether it is maternity leave, whether it is casual leave or whatever leave it is, that is also a fringe benefit or indirect compensation. Remember, you are on leave, but you'll be paid. You are not working, but you'll be paid. So it becomes uh, indirect compensation. Then we have transport services here. You can also have overtime and other allowances. All those will be performed part of the indirect compensation. So that is for that one. Now let's move to wages and salaries and we look at the difference. It's very simple, straightforward. So when you talk about salaries, what are they? They are paid to workers who are paid on a monthly basis. And they are usually office or administrative staff who receive salaries. So and they are paid on a monthly basis. But please let me uh, or uh, caution you all, let us all note that it is possible for wages, it, I said it is possible, though that is not the practice, it is possible for wages to be paid at the end of the month. But there's difference. What is the difference? The difference is that, you see, wages are paid, we said they are paid on a daily basis. So, for example, if you are working and it is on wage base, then you can be told that every day if you go to work if you work every day you'll be paid let's say 10 cities you could be paid the amount that very day or any time you go to work after the work they will give you your 10 cities or they can wait for a whole week monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday they will give you your 50 cities then you will go or if somebody may be, uh, decide that they will pay it on a monthly basis. So every day is 10 cities. So it, at the end of the month, 30 days. If you went 30 days, 10 times 30, you'll be paid. If you went 15 days, 10 times 15. But for the salary worker, whether the person goes to work or not, if they wouldn't say that you didn't come to work maybe two days or a day, so we are deducting a certain amount. Except you breach the rule. For example, it, they may say that if for a man or a, a particular man you did not come to work for let's say one week, so 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 will be deducted. If that one is there, then that one you suffer for that. Otherwise, the normal thing is that you nothing will be deducted because you didn't go to work. You were sick, you could not go to work. But if it is wage, if you were sick and you couldn't go to work, you will not be paid. So let us note that one. So uh, then I said, salaried workers usually have their money paid into their bank account. So at the end of the uh, month, you go to the bank to withdraw your money. And this is one important thing. This is very, very important for salary workers. They are entitled to join the company's pension scheme. So if you are a salary worker, the organization is supposed to pay your uh, pension uh, plan money. So every month, the employer will pay some amount of money to SNET. So that when you will retire, they will in turn pay you 
till you probably die. So that is for that one. So if you're a salary worker, you join the organization's pension scheme. But some workers make mistake. They are deceived by their employers. They tell them, oh, I'm supposed to pay you thousand cities every month and pay SNET this amount. Why don't you agree with me? So that instead of paying you a thousand, I'm adding this amount to your, so that you not, uh, I will not pay that for uh, snake. Please, never agree to uh, such thing because you'll be the one to suffer in the future. Now let's come to wages. So we are through with that. We said paid to employees who are paid on daily or weekly basis. So I've already explained to you. Then they are paid to temporary. So whilst salary workers are relatively permanent workers, these are temporary workers, usually engaged at the manufacturing section of the organization. So you go, if it is a building firm, you go there, you are amazing, at the end of every day, they pay you. If, if you carry the motor, at the end of the day, they pay you. If you are making blocks, at the end of the day, they pay you according to the agreement you have with them. So that is that. And you are not entitled to join the organization pension uh, scheme. So let us look at that one uh, too. So that is the difference between wages and then uh, salaries. Now let's come to the pay schemes. The method of paying wages and salaries. As I've told you, we have two main methods. Very simple. We have the time rate and peace rate. What is time rate? What is time rate? Time rate means, you see, listen to the name, time rate. That means you are paid according to the number of hours you work. That is all that. That is what it means. You are paid according to the number of hours you work. So let's say in that particular organization, it is said that every hour they pay, let's say, 10 cities every hour. So if you work for five hours within a particular day, you'll be paid 50 cities. So that is all that the time rate is about. What about the peace rate? The peace rate means that you'll be paid according to the number of products you produce within a day. That is what the peace rate is all about, the peace rate method or the peace method. That's what it's about. So, if, for example, you belong to the construction fair and you are supposed to make blocks, and they say that every block that you make is uh, one CD, that means that at the end of the day, if you're able to make 100 blocks, you'll be paid 100 CDs. If you make 50 blocks, you'll be paid 50. So, the number of products you are able to produce. That is uh, what you, is going to be multiplied by the fixed amount and you'll be paid to that. So at the same time rate is concerned with the number of hours that you work. Then the peace rate is the number of units that you produce. So I've given an example here. Now let's get closer with the example. So the, this example, if you are looking at the time, I said one hour is equal to 20 cities. So if there is somebody who is called X, works for five hours, then S will be paid 5 times 20, which is equal to 100 cities. Then when we come to the P3, if you pro uh, one product produced is equal to 1 CD, therefore, if S produces 100 units, S will be paid 1 CD times the 100 units, which will be 100 uh, CDs. So that is for the uh, P3. Okay. So, now, uh, we can uh, pause for something. Pause. Okay, once again, uh, you are welcome. I attended to uh, something. So, let's continue with our lesson. So, we were on uh, pay schemes. We are finished with the two main pay schemes, time rate and then the peace rate. So, we were... Going to talk about the other methods of payment. Remember, we have looked at these two methods. So there are others. So the first one is bonus. Bonus. 
So you have been hearing it. We have been paid bonus. Have they paid you your bonus and all those kind of things? What is it? Very simple. You see, when you are working, you are giving targets. Is that not it? Yes. So some organizations, if you're able to achieve your target, then apart from your wage, apart from the salary, they will give you additional amount. But that is not permanent. You, you see, your the salary or the wage is or the salary is permanent. But this one is a one-time payment. So it is it is temporary. So if you look at it, I said bonus. They say pay, uh, pay for performance. It is others call it pay for performance. That's how others call it pay for performance. And I said it is a one-time payment to reward. So it is meant it is one-time payment. But when I say one-time payment, it doesn't mean that throughout your lifetime in the organization it will be paid to you just once. No, that is not what it means. What it means is that it is not like the salary where every month you, you receive it. So this one will come once a while. Maybe the whole year you may receive it just once. Or you may not even receive anything for a particular year. That is the organization's own discretion. So it is a one-time payment to reward a worker. The next thing is very, very important. Because whether it is a wage or salary, it, it is a reward. So this reward for what? So then I said, so that's why I have underlined this. For meeting a certain performance. For meeting a certain performance. I'm repeating. For meeting a certain performance. Target was set. And the organization realized that you have been able to achieve that target. So they want to. It is not all the time that... When you achieve the target, they will do that. But in order to motivate some organization, in order to motivate you to work harder, to continue to be achieving target, then they can give you bonus or productivity. So for meeting a certain performance or for meeting a productivity goals, productivity goals. So that is what bonus. It's all about. And I said it could be paid at the end of the year or on the spot, which is called spot bonus. And I will explain to you what it meant by on the spot. Maybe a particular day, a sales representative had phenomenal sales. He, he, that day was so unique. He sold so much. And the, that the organization decided that today we are giving you this to, today. So that is the sport bonus. Sport bonus. That is sport bonus. So uh, I said that is for great performance in a short period. That is the, uh, that one. So I said, example, sales representative had phenomenal sales. Then they can give you Sport uh, bonus, so that is for that one. Now, let's move to commission. Very simple, straightforward. So we are not going to wait time on commission mathematics. You have been doing commission and all those things. When you say commission, one thing that should come to your mind is percentage. Commission is always paid on percentage. And you see, you have done law of agency, so you know types of agents and you know that agents receive commission. Especially sales agent, we have done sales agent, and so you know the factor. You know the factor. You know what they receive. So the uh, commission is one is compensated by receiving a percentage. So if you look at this, I have underlined percentage. That's the key. You see, when you are talking about any concept, there are certain words that are very important. You cannot leave them. You cannot talk about com uh, commission and then you don't talk about a uh, uh, percentage. Because commissions are always calculated on percentage basis. So one is compensated by receiving a percentage of the revenue he or she generated. 
So you sold something. You are a sales agent. So they said, okay, if you're able to sell, whatever you sell, you will give you 10%. We will give you 20%. So I've done some uh, calculations. I said, for example, now they say that if you're a sales agent, then they'll give you 20% commission on sales. 20% commission on sales. So if I sold 10,000 CDs, that is the amount of money you have generated. That is the revenue you have generated. The 10,000 is the revenue that you have generated. So X, that is represented somebody, will be paid 20% of the 10,000, which will be 2,000 Ghana CDs. Now, if you are an estate agent and somebody comes to see you, and the person says that, Good, sell my house for me, and then if you sell the house, I'll give you 5% uh, uh, commission. It means that if you sell the house, whatever money you generated, assuming the house was bought at 100,000 Ghana CDs, then you will be paid 5% of the 100,000 Ghana cities. That is what commission is all about. Ladies and gentlemen, that brings us to the end of our topic, compensation. We know what compensation is. We know the two main uh, basic pay schemes. Then we have also talked about others. We have talked about bonus. We have talked about commission. Now, here, let me say something here, the time rate and peace rate. The costing students, you don't have problem. Here, and in costing, you'll be talking about advantages and disadvantages. Advantages of time rate, disadvantage of peace rate. Uh, no, the advantage of time rate, disadvantage of time rate, advantages, disadvantages. You talk about that one. Please. The elective math students, you may not talk about that one. You can go and find out the advantages of time rate. And then the disadvantages, then the advantage of the peace rate, and then the disadvantage. But let me give you one. Let's look at the time rate. Now, you see, one advantage of the time rate, what is it? What do you think is going to be? Now, which of these, two, this one, do you think that there will be uh, quality? If you look at time rate, you are not going to be paid according to the number of units you produce, that's not it. So the person may take his time, and so quality of the product may be high under the time rate. But if you look at the peace rate, if somebody is making blocks and you tell the person that the number of blocks you make, if you make a day, that is uh, what is going to be multiplied by the fixed rate, which is let's say one Ghana CD, as we said it. The person wants 200 Ghana CDs that day, is that not it? So how many should the person produce? 200. So do you see? When the person put the uh, motor or whatever it is in the machine, the person is no. The person taking his time to make it so compact, or that the person do first, pine, pine, then the person just put their thing there. So quality will be affected because the person will rush to make uh, more products for the day. So that would be uh, one disadvantage. But here, if you look at it, more will be produced. So you, you go and find out other advantages and disadvantages of it. But the costing to the as I have indicated, you don't have problem with this thing. So if you are doing elective math, you can see any costing student and they will teach you. Or you go for any costing book, the advantages and disadvantages, they are there. Till we meet again another time to continue with this topic, uh, human resource management. Good afternoon.